Next on the list. Next on the list. Let's watch this video courtesy of Danny from The Stop. Big up Danny from The Stop, one of my favorite YouTube channels out there at the moment that does great work covering all the Joe Budden um, podcast drama and stuff. This is an interesting video. It's titled Mandy and Bridget End Podcast After Do Expires. Mandy and Bridget were part of the Joe Budden Network with their podcast called See The Thing Is. They left Joe Budden's network to do their own thing. They got a big deal, but now they're ending their podcast because there's no more money in it. You see, some of these podcasters out here, they're only in it for the money. It's the grift. It's the grift of advertising. And as long as the advertising dollars stop coming in, they will jump off podcasting quicker than you can say, hi, caramba. So these two ladies have stopped podcasting. They're not going to be missed because their podcast was fucking terrible and they had the worst takes in the world. And this might be karma for them siding with Joe Budden when he was accused of sexually harassing Olivia Dope back in the day. So let's play the video. Big up Danny for the stop. Did Mandy and Bridget end their podcast because they couldn't find another deal? That's right, y'all. Bridget and Mandy just ended their podcast. And while their initial statement... I need some... Hints I need some fucking Colombian teeth, don't I? I need some... I know I said I won't get it. I want to get Invisalign. But I need some Colombian teeth. It could have... Look at those teeth. Look how pearly white they are. They just stick out there. I need some fucking Hollywood teeth. I need some... I need some fucking Tijuana teeth. That's what I need. I need some Turkish chumpers. So I can start like podcasting a lot like, hi, hi guys. Hi, it's me. And just them choosing not to continue the podcast. Y'all can listen tomorrow for the official. Look how white they are. The teeth are even whiter than the t-shirt. The teeth match the fucking tight, you know, the text font color. Fucking hell, that's what I need. Eight me. Um, but we are ending See The Thing Is podcast. Oh, that lisp though. That lisp. Woohoo! That's the only reason why I wouldn't get that. That fucking lisp is major. One more, one more. You guys can, we are ending See The Thing Is podcast. Let's go back again. That lisp is crazy. Y'all can listen tomorrow for the official statement. The statement. Um, um, but... That we are ending to see the thing as podcast. podcast. Jesus, that lisp is uh, crazy. I think it's pretty obvious that what happened here was that their deal was up and they could not find another offer to continue the see what i mean about these podcasters especially this type of breed of people they're not in it for the banter they're not in it for the love they're not in it for the lows they're not in it for the lmaos not in it for the ha ha he he's they're only in it for the money which is no surprise that when they do get ads they fucking litter the whole pod full of fucking ads one after the other because guess what it's a cash grab they don't enjoy it they don't even enjoy talking to the fans they don't enjoy talking to the viewers. They don't enjoy shooting the shit. To them, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. And as soon as it doesn't make money, they jump ship. Pretty deplorable, to be honest. Podcast. If you don't remember, back in 2022, See The Thing Is signed a seven-figure deal with Gumball. How did they even... The fact that they even got a seven-figure deal shows you that there's some... There's probably a little bit, which is understandable. I'm not going to lie. I understand why people do it because if I was desperate enough i would probably do it too i'm not that desperate so i don't and also yeah you know i'd rather the long game right but there is probably a little hustle going on in podcasting where if you fudge your numbers it's probably a little hustle you fudge your numbers so you make it look like your podcast is more popular than what it is you use those numbers to then leverage yourself to get a good deal you get that good deal, you get the money, you bank it, and that money that money gives you runway for the next couple of years. Seven-figure deal, you divvy it out, you maybe give yourself a salary of like 30k a year or something. Yeah, I mean that keeps your keep it keeps your lights on in your house and shit, maybe pays your mortgage, and then you have other businesses going on the side. But unfortunately, because the deal was based on numbers that aren't real. When they get the report back or when they look at the numbers and they kind of assess, okay, which podcast are we sponsor, who's performing, who's not performing well, they will clearly see that your pod isn't matching the numbers that you spoke about prior. So even though you hustle them out of that initial seven figures, you can't hustle them again. So it's a bit of a one hit and done scam. It works as a scam, but it's a one hit and done. As soon as you prove you can't meet the numbers that you said you could, 
they're like, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to go somebody else. Now, to be fair, it's all one big scam because I think the podcasting companies, having worked in marketing myself, having done a lot of paid marketing campaigns myself, I know that companies just, you know, they, they have marketing money. They have spend, a budget, basically. They have to spend. doesn't matter how they spend it. They have to spend it. And usually, um, that sort of budget spend if you're smart and you're a marketing executive, you can use it to obviously leverage your own career and get yourself another fucking promotion. So maybe somebody signed you on for that podcasting deal um, in the, you know, under the illusion that you're going to help them get a promotion. You also get the bag, but then they also get to spend the money from the company that was already allocated to marketing anyway. So everyone's kind of winning. It's a weird thing to explain. I don't sure if I explained it well, but everybody kind of wins. It's just at the end, the person that loses, well, everybody wins in the interim, but then towards the end, the person that loses is a podcaster because they find out the numbers don't match. It seems like Gumball is some type of advertising agency and a place where you could sign up and have an ad read on one of the podcasts that they have attached to their advertising network. And I think it's interesting because... They look good there, though, don't they? They look fucking good. Look how white they look. Look at that. I need some chompers. I need, I need some LA chompers. I need some LA fucking chompers. Yo, big up my guy, Wingus McDingus. Big up Warren Kenner. Uh, big up Jared Mellerick, my guy, Young Old Vibes, my G. Hope you're good. Tetris Effect, Theodore, Red Chem, I see you. Reza, I see you. Snoo, I see you. Tommy, get the bag, I see you. Bang your doors, bang your fucking doors. This represents a big deal for podcasting and represents how hard it can be to go independent as a podcaster. You basically saw See The Thing Is Fold with the possibility of them no longer being able to secure another deal. Now, as to the messiness of this whole thing, I truly believe there will be more to come. And while Bridget and Mandy are presenting as if it was a mutual joint decision, I would assume there was one person who initiated this breakup, and my guess would be Mandy, as she has a lot of things going on for her. She has her podcast studio, which I'm sure generates a lot of revenue. She has horrible decisions, and I assume at some point she will be launching her own podcast and doesn't really need to see the thing is if it's not generating income and going the indie route. I disagree with that one. I don't think... Just because it's, I, I think most, the, the main reason why they stopped the podcast because they don't have any money. Sorry, because it's not generating any money. I don't think if it was generate even a small amount, they stop it. Because why wouldn't you, why why not take the extra bit of money? You know what I mean? It's all adds to the pot. If she's got all those different businesses going on, plus you have to see the thing is, you know, making you a nice little 5K a month, 10K a month. Why wouldn't you do it? It's 5K, 10K a month that you wouldn't have earned before anyway. Like, why would you leave that money on the table? They're only quitting it now because there's no deal on the table and they you know it's probably not worth their hassle to try and get money from adsense and stuff especially when you know that money is a bit inconsistent and all over the place and it's harder to kind of build an audience off of that sort of stuff so i understand why they're doing it but i think the idea that they would you know because she's got so much on she's so busy nah i think that's a lie but let me know what you think in the comments is see the thing is ending just because of irreconcilable differences or did they know that, hey, there's no money coming anytime soon and it's time to fold it up and pack it in? Now, this is a pretty sad ending for See The Thing Is. Not really. As the show has faced w countless controversies ever since it aligned with the they Joe Budden be Network. They won't be missed. Remember the whole Olivia Dope situation? She was one of the beloved co-hosts of the podcast, but had to leave after the situation with Joe Budden. But let's not forget... That even though she left because of Joe Budden, she didn't get along with Bridget and Mandy. To be fair, I think that is a bit of karma. Personally, I think it's a bit of karma. I know it isn't, but I would like to think it's karma. Because those girls, when they sided with fucking Budden, and, and that, I was like, what? Especially because they were all like, you know, out here preaching that they were about women empowerment all this sort of nonsense then olivia dope gets into a weird situation with joe budden maybe it got blown out of proportion maybe but still her feelings should be fucking you know valid and should be warranted she felt as if she was violated she felt as if it was inappropriate what joe budden did kind of hugging her and kind of gyrating on her and stuff it was basically deemed to be sexual harassment and now that we 
since some time has passed, Rory from Rory and Moore's podcast um, kind of revealed that Joe Budden kind of settled out of court. He kind of had to write her a check, essentially, to stop it from being coming a big thing. And I'm assuming she probably had to sign an NDA as well. Hence why she hasn't spoken about it. But it was clearly a big enough situation that it would go down the lawsuit flipping route. Those girls decided to fucking side with Joe Budden. And it's like, huh? And in the end, they ended up falling out of him anyway. So it's like, what a fucking shit situation. So most likely, I would like to believe that it was a, you know, karmic retribution. But obviously, we all know karma doesn't exist. So it's probably just a business thing. It didn't make enough money. Um, it's not making enough money now with no fucking deal. No deal on the table. Let's fucking end it. But big up Olivia Dope. Joe Budden, she didn't get along with Bridget and Mandy if we really want to do the science. Now the show ends after just a couple years and it will largely likely be forgotten because, exactly. hey, there's so many podcasts that come and go. And it was terrible but too. But we have to remember that it might have been the most successful thing the Joe Budden podcast created outside of the Joe Budden. <laughs> Look, he's special. I still don't understand why Joe felt it was a good idea to have his first show on his network launch be a show with women. Especially that, like, I didn't understand that. Like, that was such a weird first show to go with. But I guess he was trying to rewrite the narrative around himself being an abuser, about that story of him sitting on some woman's stomach. Like, you know, there's all these allegations around Budden's name. So I guess in an effort to kind of get ahead of the story, rewrite the narrative, he tried to, you know, say, hey, I'm the fucking supporter, ally of women. I'm going to have this woman show. And then it kind of all imploded. Because, you know, they all didn't get along. Maybe there was some jealousy going on there. Who knows? And it kind of went the way it went. Podcast. It actually stuck around for a bit, even after it left the Joe Budden Network. And for that, you must commend Bridget and Mandy. But let me know what you think in the comments. Will you miss See The Thing Is? Nope. Or is it just another podcast what, miss it? Don't that care. fell apart because the business was no longer profitable? I also think this is a indication of the future of other podcasts to come. I agree with that. Like, I don't think Bridget and Mandy are the only people who are going to have to deal with this. Joe Budden has been hinting towards a lot of podcasts ending real soon. And this is exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about market conditions impacting the abilities of podcasts to simply exist because... No shot at Rory and Maul, but they're independent too now, right? They don't have a deal in place, at least it would seem. So the difference with them is that they actually have views. I know people are going to say their views are in the, like really bad, but they're actually not bad. They generate some level of income and they have the live show, merch, and they have a really loyal fan base that's way bigger than See The Thing Is. So You know what I think? I don't think it's over for podcasts, like Seven Dirty said. I think the issue is that you should probably take the bag. Like, for instance, like, if you built a big enough of a community, no, if you built a legit community and a fan base around what you do and somebody offers you a bag, take it. Because you know, even when that deal expires, you're still going to have your fans that you had beforehand. But I think if you take the bag with no fans... That's when the issue starts. It's almost similar to like a recording artist, like a, like an artist, like a singer, a rapper and stuff who doesn't have a fan base, but then gets put on, you know, but via a label. But then, you know, once the label stops inventing money in you, you've got no fan base to kind of go back to. And you have to start from basically ground zero. So I think it's better to get the, I think it's better to build your audience, build your fan base, build your viewership organically. Do it the fucking hard slog way. One viewer, one listener after another. Then, when you get to a point where somebody offers you the bag, take the bag, obviously, because the money up front is good. Especially if it's like six, seven figures plus and stuff. Of course, take the fucking money. But then don't expect that money to last forever. Always kind of, you know, go back to sort of like, going back to your base sort of thing. Similar to what academics did. Academics had that deal with Spotify. He might have fucked it up because of the drama with his girl, who knows. But the deal expired. But he got a big bag out of it. He got big more exposure. Then he just went back to streaming. Like, you know, the same thing he was doing beforehand. So I think that's the basically the way to kind of go about things. But what you're seeing with a lot of these guys, which is quite transparent, is that they only do it for the money. 
So when the money's gone, when that bag is gone, the motivation to record, to talk about current events, to give your hot takes, to upload, to edit, to clip, all this stuff, it completely dissipates because there's no money in it. I understand that, to be fair. But I think if you're in it for the love, for the realness of fucking just sitting here ranting into a webcam like I am, then you'll just do it for nothing. You know what I mean? Do it for shits and giggles because why not? might be in a better spot but they're not the only ones i'm thinking about people like poor minds i'm thinking about all of these folks that have to execute a podcast with no deal in place all right y'all that's my video for today maybe it's a good thing though to be fair maybe it's a good thing all in um maybe it's a good thing because i think there's too many podcasts even for myself being a podcast listener being a podcast creator there's just too many podcasts out there man there's just too much to listen to, too much stuff. So maybe it's, it's better for us, the listener, and us, the content creators, that there's a less, there's more room now. It's less crowded. And I think as a listener, there's less pods available. So you get to, so the ones that are left over are the ones that people, are the ones that are actually good because they're still getting paid, they're still getting a bag, and the ones that are actually still doing it for the love of it. That's probably the right way to call about it. I think so, um, all in all. So, you know, um, what do you call it? Safe travels to those two girls. Um, again, for me, I want to believe it's comment retribution for Olivia Dope because I feel like the way exactly Young Old Vibes, the way they did Olivia Dope was so disgusting. Um, the way they sided with Joe Budden and kind of gaslight her into not into into you know thinking that she kind of brought it upon herself and she was making a meal out of nothing it was gross. Especially when they were championing the whole like yeah we agree with women we are women empowerment type of thing. And then you know at the first sort of instance the first scenario where you kind of get to put that shit in action they completely failed. So um, love and solidarity to Olivia Dope. Unfortunate way to end the show for see the thing is but they won't be missed. They won't be blood clot mist i'll tell you that much for free i'll tell you that much for free moving on moving on let's go for some clips what are you guys saying actually let me go to the stream chat what are you guys saying stream chat i haven't been in touch with you more 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 be able to decline on rogan and shit yep 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 now rogan will be fine i think rogan's never going to decline i think he'll be fine he's definitely in it for the love obviously the money's good but he also does it because you know he he loves fucking podcasting you don't talk that much every other day just for the money. You know what I mean? He, he fucking loves it for real. Um, and also, even if the money from Spotify goes away, he still makes probably 50 mil a year from that podcast alone or just on AdSense. So imagine the fucking advertising and shit. Rogan is fine. He's never going anywhere, to be fair. Um, big up AZ, chatting, live streaming, pushing podcasts out. Live streaming, live streaming. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right because I think I listen to, you know what, nowadays, you might be right there, Ruben Rivera, because I think I listen to way more live streams than I do listen to podcasts now. I'm not going to lie. I think I actually use my phone to watch live streams way more than I listen to an actual podcast. Kind of wild, you know, kind of wild. And to be honest, the live streams I listen to or I watch in the background or whatever, they're just random things. Sometimes I'll just go on YouTube, I'll click the live tab, and whatever's live that looks interesting, I'll just listen to it. Whether it's fucking Tim Pool, whether it's some random YouTuber who I haven't checked out, whoever it is. You know what I mean? Whoever it fucking is, I'll just, whether it's my guy King Sly, whoever, I'll just fucking tune in, just check it out for the sake of it. So maybe in terms of, you know, listening, listenership and shit throughout the year or throughout the week, basically, my kind of consumption is steering more towards live streaming, which may be the reason why live streams are fucking popping off. You know what I mean? Um, Real Talk AZ, big up Honky Tonk, Tennessee. I appreciate you, my G. Um, blah, 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 blah. Big up Queso Moses, what's good? Hope you're well, my friend. Black Effect Pod Network is next. 90% of their podcasts are trash. You know what? I don't even know what's on their network. I swear to God. I have no idea what's on there. I've not, I don't think I've listened to a single one on there. Oh no, I think I listened to the. Is it the eighty one and South show? Are those? Is that that's on there, right? Black Effect. Let's check. Let's check the website. I don't even know what's on Black Effect. I really don't know. That's um, what's his name? That's um, Charlemagne the God's podcast network. What's he got on here? He's got big facts. I've never listened. to... Oh, that's that's the guy from Atlanta. I've seen video clips of it, but I've never watched the full show. Um, deeply well, I don't know who that is. The moment, I don't know who that is. The professional home girl, who's that? I don't know who Ebony is. Yeah, so I've watched 85 and South, but I've seen video clips of them. I don't listen to the podcast. I've seen clips of All The Smoke. That's a good That's a good show. Um, 
I've seen clips of the Big Fat Show. I've seen clips of Drink Chance, but I don't listen to the whole thing because those guys are some of the most, you know, horriblest podcasters, content creators on the face of the earth. It's horrendous. All the interruptions and stuff, all the fucking, you know, the fucking clapping and the, yeah, I can't do it. Um, Earn Your Leisure, I've, again, YouTube channel. I I've, I've seen their videos pop up on my feed, but I haven't checked their podcast out. Hell of a Week, no, really. Gangs of Chronicles, not really. Hello, somebody. Not really. None. Yeah, none of these shows I've 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 listened to. None. Oh shit! I didn't know Michael Blackson had a podcast. I had no idea about that. R and B Money. <laughs> There's a podcast called R and B Money. Lows. Like what? Okay, cool. Um, we've got one called Naked with Carrie Champion. No ceilings. I don't know who that is. Look at the fucking artwork. The graphics for it. No ceilings on the cl uh, yuck. Street politicians, no. Yeah, I've not listened to any of these things. Zero. Horrible decisions. I don't come on. We'll listen to that shit. Maybe the only one I, I heard of that does well is horrible decisions because I've seen people share clips of that a lot. So maybe horrible decisions. Um, obviously, um, drink champs, and then eighty five and south and all the smoke. They might be the most popular shows on there. So they've got probably five shows on there that are probably pulling in all the numbers. I would assume so. And who, who's this woman here? Moment with who? Sarah Jake Roberts. I don't know who the fuck that is. But yeah, crazy, isn't it? I've literally never heard of any of these shows. Wow. But yeah, big up them. Big up Case of Moses. Let's continue. Let's continue.